Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to be going through 10 tips for beginners in Adobe InDesign. So in InDesign, when we use the type tool to left click and draw a text box and fill this with some text, what can often occur as we adjust the size of this is that we get this auto hyphenation. Now this is where words cannot fit within the text box, so it breaks them up into two and connects them with a hyphen. Now sometimes we want that, sometimes we don't. Now the way we can remove that easily is select the text tool and press Command or Control A inside the text box to select everything and then go up to Window down to type and tables and select paragraph and you'll see it will open up the paragraph panel and at the very bottom there's an option called hyphenate. Simply uncheck that and your text will no longer be auto hyphenated. So oftentimes in InDesign we want to change the case of our text. So if I type in some text here, some text here and we can increase the size of this text. And I'm just going to create a few copies of this by holding Alt and Shift and dragging down. So if we select the first one and with the type tool, we'll just drag over the text to make a selection and go to type, down to change case, and we can change this to uppercase. We could change the next one to lowercase. Now this one here is already title case where it capitalizes the first letter on every word. But then the last one we have sentence case where it only capitalizes the first letter on the first word. Now in InDesign, when we're working with text, what we can do is we can use the type tool to select a portion of text and we can change various properties. Now some of those may include stroke color so we could change this to blue. However, this is using the formatting effects text selection. We can change this to formatting effects container as well. So if I were to select this text here just by clicking on it with the main selection tool rather than the type tool, if I then go and apply a color it applies it to this bounding box, also known as a container. So you can switch between the two here and you can see that the respective fills and stroke change as well. So if I want to change the text color, I can switch over to formatting effects text. And the shortcut for that is J on the keyboard. And then I can make the appropriate selection of a color or any other styling option it's just making sure that you've got the container or the text selected as necessary. Okay, so in InDesign, you may want to sometimes add drop shadows. So if we draw a rectangle and we'll give this a color, we can add a drop shadow by going up to object, down to effects, and we get a whole bunch of different effects. Now these are very similar to the blending options that you'll find in Photoshop and we can click drop shadow and we get a very similar, albeit simplified menu. And we can tick various options and we can choose whether this applies to the object, the stroke or the fill and in some cases the text. And I'll just turn on the preview box so you can see what I'm doing. And try and move this out the way. So we can adjust the distance here. That's the distance that the shadow is from the shape. We can change the angle. We can even use the X and Y offset as well. So we can offset it along the horizontal X axis or the vertical Y axis. We can adjust the size. So this is how much the shadow will blur. We can adjust the spread. So it just makes it a little bit more precise and harder around the edges. And we can even add some noise to our shadow if we want. And we can click OK and then just go back up to Object, Effects and Drop Shadow if we want to go and make any further changes at a later date. Now 
So in InDesign, it's possible to create tables and we can do this by using the type tool to define a text area and then go to table, insert table, and we can specify the number of rows. So we could have three columns and six rows. Click OK and it creates that table. And now we can select all of the different cells with the type tool by dragging over and go to table and then we go to table options and we get a few different options here. So we could click table setup and we get lots of different tabs that we can start adjusting, but we can also go to cell options and we can choose the format for the contents of those cells. So we could define the strokes in the fill so we could select certain parts and we could change the color. So our table now becomes blue with a thicker stroke and we could change the style of the stroke as well. So we could go for something like a dashed line and there's lots of different properties in there that you can use to fully customize your table and we can then click with the type tool and then start typing within it. Now this is a really quick tip when you're working in InDesign, if you've defined your margins for your document, your bleed and a slug area as well, what you can do is you can very quickly switch between this view here, which shows you a final trimmed version of your document against a gray workspace. You can switch between that by pressing W on the keyboard and you can see it toggles down here as well if you'd like to do it manually or preview a certain view. So now we can press W, we can see our margins, which are helpful for aligning things. We can see our bleed marked by the red line here. And we've also got our slug area on the right. So we can quickly switch between those. And if you'd like to edit any of those properties, you go to File, Document Setup, and it will bring up this dialog box, similar to what you see when you first create a document. And then you can make any changes here as you need to. Or if you need to change the margins, just go to Layout, margins and columns and you've got those settings there. So when you create a new document, they're all together. After you've created the document, you can edit them, but they're just in slightly different places. Now, when we add images to InDesign by going to file and place and then navigating to the image and importing it into InDesign, it will add it in. And if it's a high resolution image, it will be too big. So you may want to scale it down. However, if you drag from the corners, it doesn't actually scale down. It actually crops into the image and adjusts the bounding box instead. However, if you hold down shift and command or control, you can quickly and easily scale the image down and it will not adjust the bounding box. So that's command or control, depending on whether you're on Mac or PC, and also holding shift. Now something else you can do is up here at the top, when you have this selected, you'll see these percent icons here. Now this is for the scale X percentage and the scale Y percentage, and at the moment they're linked. So if I just keep clicking, you'll see the value doesn't actually change, but it will increase or decrease the size of the image. Or I can just click in either of these boxes, it makes no difference because the proportions are linked. And then I can use the up and down arrows on my keyboard or hold shift and use the up and down arrows on the keyboard to work in larger increments to quickly and easily adjust the size of images. Now, once you've imported your image into InDesign, you may wish to adjust the crop. Now we can do this by adjusting the frame, but if we don't want to adjust the frame, we just want to change the crop of the image. For example, zooming in on this landscape here, instead of the main selection tool, we can switch over to the direct selection tool. And I like to click off everything else to deselect it. And then you see the hand appear. And if we click on this, we can then go up here to the scale X and scale Y percentages and use these arrows to increase the crop or just click in the box and use the up and down arrow keys and adjust the crop as necessary. And once we have the sizing right, with the direct selection tool selected, we can actually just move this around. And that is how we can adjust the crop nice and quickly in InDesign.
So when working with images in InDesign, there's a variety of different ways that we can encourage the content to fit the frame or the frame to fit the content. So if I click the image, you can see the blue container or frame around the edge and the image is within it. If we right click on the image, we can select fitting and there's a variety of different options that we can choose. So we can fill the frame proportionally or we can fill the content proportionally. We can choose to fit the frame to our content or vice versa. We can have our content define our frame. So let's click this one. And you can see it fits the content to the frame or we can have it fill it proportionally. Or if we go and adjust the crop, so we'll zoom in loads and right click again and we'll have fit frame to content. The frame then becomes large to fit our content. Or you can right click and go fitting and clear frame fitting options and it will remove everything altogether back to when you first imported the image. So when working within InDesign, it is possible to create very large documents, for example, brochures, magazines that include lots of high res imagery. Now this can become very taxing on a computer and InDesign has a few different settings that allow you to easily handle large amounts of information and high res imagery really, really well. So at the moment you can see the image on screen actually looks a bit pixelated. Now this is a high res image. Why is it pixelated? Well, if you go up to object at the top, down to display performance, you'll see that typical display is selected. Now I can change this to fast display. And what it does is it will change this image to a gray box with a strike through it, both one direction and the other. Now, if you have a magazine that's 100 pages long and you've got hundreds and hundreds of different high res images, it will become incredibly difficult to navigate through it. You'll need an incredibly powerful computer or it will just break your computer. So this is a great way to work on the layout without having to focus on the imagery. So you can kind of just add all of these images in. And this is a pretty quick way of working. InDesign will handle this incredibly easily because it hasn't got to render the entire image. We can then go a level up we can go display or typical display. Now it doesn't display the image at its full resolution. It is a fairly low resolution. You can see it's very pixelated, but this is still relatively easy for InDesign to handle, even with loads of images, but it's just dropping the quality. So what you're seeing isn't the actual end result. In fact, if I were to export this now, it would export it as the high resolution image that it is. It just makes it a lot easier to handle when you're working on a large document. Now, if you are packing a complete powerhouse of a computer, you can go to object display performance and use high quality display. Or if you just want to preview how something looks without the pixelation, you can select that and it will show you your imagery or everything in your document in its high res format. And there we go. There's 10 tips to get you started in Adobe InDesign. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.